Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Foundation Level Certification. We are in Chapter 4 talking about Test Analysis and Design. And today we will be stepping into the next segment that is 4.4 Experience Based Test Techniques. And as a part of this tutorial, today we are talking about the first technique in this category that is Error Guessing. Before we start talking about the technique error guessing, let's have, let's have quick discussion on this category once again, a little deep dive. However, we have covered this introduction already as a part of the 4.1, where we were discussing on the categories of different uh, techniques. And uh, the same thing, we'll be just elaborating once again here to make sure that you have a good understanding of it. So a quick discussion on experience based, as I told you, experience based test techniques are completely driven by the experience of the tester, which includes the past experience of testing similar products at the same time, what domain knowledge the tester possesses. The domain knowledge here means the type of the product where it belongs, like is it a banking product, is it an e-commerce, is it a healthcare product and so on, like automotive, etc. So domain knowledge is equally important to add to the overall experience. And third important thing is the typical knowledge of the defects. Given that a person possesses the knowledge of what kind of defects do we find in the product, it would be very useful for that person to design the test cases accordingly and hit only those particular areas where we quite often find the defects. So most important thing to highlight here that this category consists of techniques where it is completely driven by the tester and which is best known to the tester. So no formal approaches, no formal techniques are being applied here no calculations, is completely dependent on the tester who is testing it. So the question comes quite often that, hey, if a fresher is trying to perform this uh, technique, is that something feasible to say it is experience-based test technique? Answer is not. That is, a fresher does not possess any past experience, domain knowledge. To a certain extent, they know about what is the industry, but they literally do not have the domain knowledge and they do not have any knowledge of typical defects. Another example could be that if you say, if I have worked in banking industry as a test manager for 70 years, and now I'm switching to automotive, is that like I can use experience-based test techniques? Answer is absolutely not again, because this person is certainly experienced, but in a different domain and different industry, and has tested different type of product in past, whereas what this person is trying to do now is completely irrelevant or different than what he or she was doing in the past. So that's again something those scenarios where we cannot call it as experience-based test techniques or these type of people cannot apply these category techniques. So let's quickly check what we have to say from the syllabus outline. Number one, experience-based test techniques basically uses tester skills, intuitions and experience of similar application and technologies. These techniques are useful in identifying the special tests which are not easily captured by the formal techniques. Now let me tell you something more important here that is when it comes to the formal techniques which is more of like black box and white box they are very well documented and well defined so it's very easy to justify the coverage measured or at the same time it's easy to determine what you are actually testing and whether it is in the scope or not when it comes to experience based test techniques it will be completely driven by the tester and dependent on them so we may not be able to sometimes justify that how did you really cover every single thing so we most Mostly we define and you know understand that we should always make use of the formal test techniques as much as possible until unless the formal test techniques are not applicable, we must not look forward to experience-based. So experience-based test techniques should be always seen as a secondary approach if formal techniques are not applicable. However, in some of the cases, formal techniques can be conducted and on top of it, a round of informal technique which is experience based test techniques can always add more value better coverage and more confidence so formally executing some test cases and then a round of experience based test technique can be a really good method also to add here these techniques are usually applied after applying formal techniques and there are a few scenarios where these are the only options to be applied now that's the most important thing to highlight at this point of time that is that there are certain cases where formal techniques are not at all applicable and you only have the hope of the experience-based test techniques. And what are they? 
Number one, specifications are poorly defined. Now, when I say specifications are poorly defined, it simply means that the requirements are not clearly mentioned or requirements are very high level. And given that requirements are very high level, I cannot apply black box test techniques. And in that context, I may be a tester, so I don't even know what is code. So I cannot go with white box. So in this case, only experience based test technique will be applicable. The second scenario here is time pressure. So of course, sometimes in a project at the end of the day, you may undergo a time pressure, which means you're remaining with more activities, more executions to be performed, but you have limited timeline available or deadline is very close. In that context, running formally written test cases would be very time consuming. So you keep your written test cases aside and start using your experience to run the test in order to cover the remaining part of the system. However, that's not something we should be used as a primary approach. This is only in the worst situations. Third, where we say that the testing team is not formally trained on testing fundamentals. And that's another interesting fact. So there might be domain experts who are working in different industries. Uh, for example, if you go to an automotive factory that is workshop, you can find people working and assembling cars for 20 years, 25 years, and so on. If, they are, if you ask them, hey, can I have a look on your test cases? They would say, we don't know what is test cases. But the question is, they have been testing cars for the last 25 years. So they really have good experience and domain knowledge, and they are able to assemble the car in a way that it functions well. So it does not really mean that they know what is equivalence partition, what is boundary value analysis, but still they are testing the system. So yes, in this case also, when the team is not formally trained on testing, that means they don't know what are the test techniques, they, can, they will be certainly using experience-based test techniques as their primary approach. So let's quickly look at the very first technique, which is error guessing as a part of this tutorial and try to understand how this technique is different from the formal technique. So the concept of error guessing goes something like this. Say, assume that you have applied some of the formal techniques like white equivalence partition, boundary value analysis, etc., and you got some test, 10, 10 test cases, you executed them, you got some output X, Y, Z. And now you are thinking that you are some, somehow underconfident or you think that probably there are more defects which might be underlying and we don't want to take a chance. Then you guess or intuit the errors which you may have in the system. And that certainly depends on your past experience, the knowledge of the demand and the topics, the difficult defects, what you may have pay, faced as part of the past experience or testing. So certainly it is completely dependent on the intuition of the individual that what they think could be probably wrong in the system and you directly go and hit them. All the experience based test techniques are not necessarily recommended to have a written test case. So you can write not predefined test cases like high level one liners and that would be enough to execute the test. However, that's optional. So if you wish to write uh, test cases on high level, you can do that. But even if you don't write, that's absolutely fine. So you can just go and interact with the system directly without any kind of documentation and execute your test cases to find the defect. Let me tell you, error guessing is what the name is, of course, as the approach what we discussed, but certainly comes with win-win situation in both the scenarios, whether you get a defect or not. So if you get a defect, you certainly were right in your intuition. And even if you don't get a defect, you are still happy that you tried it, but it's working fine. So I'm at least having a level up on the confidence. So such techniques, which is like experience-based techniques, certainly add win-win situations from both the cases, even if you get a defect or you don't get a defect. Also to add here, this systematic approach of conducting error guessing is called as fault attack. Purposefully, there is a name for this approach being executed called as fault attack. The reason is here you know what defect are you looking for. That means your strategy, your execution is dependent on the type of defect which you already know. But in generic testing, we say the objective is finding defects, right? We don't know what we are looking for. We are testing the functionality and during that we find something which we don't expect. But here we know what we are expecting, what we are looking for. All we know that is there's something like this which quite often happens and I'm just trying to uncover that. So that's the reason the approach of executing error guessing is specifically called as fault attack. So how, as far as you remember these terminologies, you will be able to answer a question. Also to add further the same story what I told you earlier, that is updating the results of 
execution and evaluating further needs to the test of their executions can be done in a very high level. That means a very high level summarized way of uh, result can be created in terms of what have you done during the execution and does that really added value or how did that add the value to the overall results. And plus the situations what we make use of, of course the error guessing is based on how the application has worked in the past, what type of mistakes the developers tend to make and failures that have occurred in other applications. So put together, this technique is completely based on your intuitions and guesses based, off, based on your past experience and you try to execute the system as much as possible to see if you can find some defects. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning. Thank you.